Hey there! Back again. Ooh, that's weird. George here to do a glass marble demonstration. And I'm running a little late. Isn't that fun? You can see some of the smooshing around setup stuff. Cool. All right. I'm glad I was going to start the camera upstairs. I was like, I'm glad I didn't. There's like three disasters between here and there. Not big, but you know, just uh, this or that happening. All right, I got a couple other cameras that I'm going to turn on because um, I'm going to be changing the way things go over the next couple of months. There, there's one going. And when I was first starting to do this, I had four cameras and a special um, computer that I built just for live streaming that you could like flip between things. Anyway, none of that worked. So after doing this for um, in this kind of venue for like a year and some year and a half, uh, switching from live demonstrations, I've decided to uh, try to change it up again. So, see what we can do about getting some multiple camera angles in. And I'm just, I can't read this upside down. I can't see the lights either. There we go. All right, cool. <laughs> The indicator lights were facing the opposite way. <laughs> anyway, I got these GoPro cameras for doing all of these uh, piano disassembly uh, live, or not live shows, but recording them so we could do multiple angles and uh, time lapses and stuff like that. So I'm going to switch my marble demonstrations to that. Um, and I'm going to use the uh, demonstration as a means to record things on a regular basis because doing demonstrations is fun. So let's get going. I'm going to do a, uh, a galaxy today. And with that, we're going to uh, need some silver and gold leaf and some large diameter clear rods and some colors. I've chosen uh, a transparent cobalt blue and an opaque blue. I also have some UV active glass. I've got two different flavors. Let me see here if we can see the. There we go. Got a spall. There are um, threads. Here's a rod, and here's some threads. Pulled those down from some other more dense UV rods into some clear stuff because I want them to sort of blend into the background. You can see the little uh, line where they are, which is kind of nice but I also want there to be like a definitive different design between lights on and lights off black light on all right so I'm going to get out my silver leaf first I've got a special little pair of tweezers for picking up foil here's my silver I'm going to get my gold out you can see I have a special gold tin a special Silver tin, that's pretty high tech stuff right there. And I need just a little piece of gold. Gold is hammered a lot thinner than the silver. It's more difficult to pick up. That is kind of like picking a baby up by the ear. What I just did there, not nice. But I didn't tear it, so that's good. <laughs> I'm full of the colorful metaphors today. <laughs> All right, let's get going. So for the galaxy marble that I'm going to do, it's um, the, the order of putting things together is actually pretty complicated uh, as compared to some other galaxy marbles you see, a lot of them are made in the vortex style, which means there's like some pickup on a part that's then shaped as a cone, or 
There's a twist, which is then applied to a front surface of a marble and then decorated. Um, so this is a series of stacked dots, which is going to get rotated uh, on several axes, and uh, the stacked dots will all have things in between. You can spend a lot of time doing this. <laughs> Oh, so I'm back to my original camera angle, which I like for the live performance because I can show you this. You can see what I'm talking about, but I'm doing it live. I've got my little magnifying glass here so you can see stuff up close. And uh, then the other angles I have, I'm, gonna, I'm doing two today just to see how that goes. I have four that I could do uh, shooting at 4K. Um, I, that's probably like overkill, but we'll see what it looks like. Be fun to experiment. Over the past year and a half, switching to the live demonstrations, I have, as time allowed or as my interest allowed, I, I would uh, like edit videos and things like that. A lot of times it was like just the puppet show announcement that I was editing, kind of for practice. Um, leading up to what's going to be a more cohesive, time-compressed demonstration. So usually my demonstrations are like 40 minutes to an hour for a marble, which is pretty accurate. I'm slowed down a little bit uh, talking about things, so that does uh, influence the time of the process. Um, most people do not have that kind of time to devote to watching something like that, unless they just like like the sound of my voice or something like that, or think it's fun to watch uh, flames for a long period of time. I'm not gonna get any more flame in the. All right, good. So looking at. Um, other marble making videos that people are watching. They're shorter, they're time compressed, there's a lot edited out. It's not someone extemporizing on the process. I guess most people aren't interested in that. And uh, the marble designs are a lot simpler than the ones that I'm generally showing. Um, so I'm gonna go in that direction. Uh, I flashed this large diameter rod. It's now ready to start melting. You can see it's hot in the end. I'm going to get a gather going. Once I have that gather going, I'm going to flatten the end just a little bit, and then I'm going to pick up my first metal foil. I could pick up my color first too. It doesn't it, your the, whatever order that you choose is fine. Um, if you are using these as a learning tool. Or, uh, you know, tips, maybe. I don't know. Up to you. And then, so, designs are going to come out. Whichever way you do them, it's going to look cool. Because glass is amazing. It is sparkly and like a rock, but clear and all the colors that you ever want to see. Amazing. I never get tired of playing with it. Unless things are not going my way that day. Then I'm... <laughs> I'll be untired about it tomorrow. <laughs> Alright. So the weather has turned a little bit here in Wisconsin. And we're in uh, short sleeves, good and bad for glass working. Some people don't like to have stuff on their arms. I mean, for little chips and things flying off. Um, I almost like to have long sleeves most of the time for that very reason. All right, so my gather on this rod is pretty nice. This is about a 12 millimeter rod, good starting point. I'm just going to flatten it just a little bit. I'm going to pick up my first foil. I'm going to pick up the old first. And there it is on the end. Now, 
I'm gonna keep the let's see if I can get this. There we go. You keep this warm in the farthest away portion of the flame. This other rod I'm flashing to bring it up to temperature. This rod has been melted before, you see. So hopefully it'll be a little more cooperative than the new rod. The soft Moretti glass that I use. Uh, there's a few other brands, Moretti mostly. It's a little bit um, temperamental, thermal shockish. I'm done flashing that other large diameter rod. This one's still warm. You can see the gold on the end. G3D. Let's see it. Super bag. Nice. <laughs> So next I'm going to layer a series of large, clear dots, or gathers, uh, amidst layers of UV active glass, color, and other metal foils. And that's the basis for my version of a galaxy. I don't use uh, dichroic. Um, it's, just, it's hard to get for 104. Um, unless you buy big pieces, in which case you're using the same color over and over again. It's boring. So, I have to switch to some 90 glass. I'm hoping to do that this summer. I always say that every year. I'm going to switch to 90 and 104 stuff. Not expensive dichro, but it does have nice colors. And I'm still learning about the 104. It's only been 30 years. Got some cool ideas I want to try. All right, here's my next clear gather. Let's moosh it on there. Okay, I'll flatten it out. Oh, squishing stuff. All right, I'm gonna get my clear cobalt. Put a little dot on there. You can really change the look of your galaxy um, with a lot of factors. One of them is the volume of glass that you add uh, for this technique in particular. The twisted dot. Um, you can have a very rarefied dot. You can have a thick dot. Um, and they all have different looks. It's something you definitely want to play with. I put the dot in and I flattened it. If you look on the side, you can see it's merged with the surface of the clear. Oh, another reason I switched back to my original camera angle is that if you look at last week's demonstration, you see that there was a lot of weird artifacts of the video compression because of all the rods in the background, the straight lines, the video couldn't compress or was over compressing and it was causing some problems between uh, well, I don't know, my camera and the variable frame rate of, that YouTube displays at or Facebook displays at. Uh, also, additionally, I was using the uh, back-facing camera on my phone, and I usually use the front-facing camera, which on um, my particular model is a lot higher resolution, so I think that might also have been a factor. I don't know. Anyway, I looked at it today thinking, oh, am I going to try that angle again? I'm like, no, that was a disaster. <laughs> don't do that again. So that's what got me thinking about wanting to do the other cameras and start doing a more um, polished, finished product rather than making the same uh, sort of extemporizing live demos over and over again. 
because once you have one on the internet, it's probably enough. Seeing it live is cool, but you know, no one's gonna watch a hundred <laughs> demos of me making different flowers and eyes and galaxies. I don't think. Do it when it's live because it's a hoot. And I say stupid stuff. It's hilarious. <laughs> There's my dot. Put some UV glass in there. Ooh. It's going to be cool. So I'm melting another cold gather to go with that. You know, and what I. Gosh. I wish I would have had these rods reversed. I used the, this shorter one for the base and this longer one to do all my gathers with. Which was my intention initially. I don't know. Somehow, I started talking and my brain stopped working. Happens. I hear. <laughs> I'm flashing this opaque blue rod. Popped off a little end of it. Mm, hate that. I go chasing those little bits. Down. They'll poke me later. Go out. Right there. I'm just going to heat it because it's a little crickety right now. Because I, I pulled away at a, at a weird angle too fast. And now I've heated it and it's it's even again. Happiness. And then you see it's bumped out from the surface. So let's heat it. And then uh, I'm going to push it in a little bit. And then I'll melt it until the edge of the dot fuses with the back disc. So if you, if you press the dot in, you're chilling the area where you first hit the dot, and so it doesn't spread out. It stays the shape that you want and the size you want. Um, if you just try to get it in with surface tension, the edges won't be as sharp, and it's going to change size. So sometimes that's good. You can work with that. Um, in this case, um, you know, I get picky, even if it doesn't, if it's not going to influence my design, if I can have control over it, I want to play with that control. Um, even if it's not for this marble, it's practice for the future. Other times I might want to control that, so why not practice that? All right, I got a different color, not a different color, a different density of a UV active glass. And I'm just putting that in there. Let that melt in. Ooh, I have a bigger rod that's on a handle already that I made for making eyes earlier this week. So I'm gonna flash that. <laughs> oh, and then I'm keeping this warm. There's my two dots. Can we see the two dots yet? Almost. By the time we get the Next couple of clear gathers on there on the floor, you'll see. Whoops! Popped off the end of my rod. I wasn't paying close enough attention. <laughs> but when you see all those dots in the cylinder of dots that I've made, it's kind of cool. Then we'll get in there and we'll start manipulating it. Once we've done the build, then we'll do the motion. I bet other people have different ways of describing that. So many times, like, if you're doing drawing or painting, you do the background first. And then you do stuff that's closer to the foreground. And uh, sometimes you'll pencil the whole thing in so you have an idea of where the foreground elements are going to be in the background. And so... This build that I'm doing is kind of like the background, but 
when I finish the build, I'm going to sort of take a take a little step back and look at it and say, is this my balance right for what's going to happen next? Sometimes you know because you've done a lot of them. Sometimes you don't. But even if you don't know, taking a reference point is not a terrible idea. If I'm trying to do something, sometimes I'll pause between the marbles and make a few notes. But if you're like me and you make notes about what you were doing in the studio and then you look back on those notes, you don't know what the heck those meant <laughs> a year later. <laughs> Maybe you do. I don't. So I draw pictures. That is... Uh, that often lasts a lot longer. Or if you could do words and pictures, or a picture that's like described cartoon style. That, that works for me. Or arrows, I like arrows. You know, draw like the different stages of your build, and then arrows of like where you're gonna move it next. And uh, if you move it where the secondary movement's gonna be, Probably gibberish. Forget I said that. <laughs> so, I picked up that silver. It's on there. Corner crinkled a little bit on me. It'll be fine. It gets shredded. I, of course, want it to stay perfect and be right where I put it until I do something with it, but it didn't, so I will try to pay a mind of that next time. Oh, let's get around there. I want to add a little bit more glass. I'm going to put, this is already hot, I'm just going to get another gallery real quick. And this is where I could make the marble a little bit bigger if I wanted to. Or if I wanted to have like some buffer as to where I'm going to put my handles on it for twisting, punties if you're fancy, or Italian, I'm neither. <laughs> so handles. Now right, we're going to use up. The last of this clear rod on the on the little tiny handle, just about. Oh, there's some left. That'll go into a monster eye next time, maybe. Uh, heating this up. Ooh, I'm gonna turn on the fan. Getting a little bit stinky in here. So now I'm just heating. I've got I've finished my build essentially. I can't really see the layers yet. I'm gonna just heat it up, see if I can get all those layers to draw together into a smoother cylinder. And we'll see them all. And I'll hand it off to a steel handle. And we'll form it up to more of a sphere before we move on to the next manipulation. Really, I've got a camera that's like just off of my left hand here, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what that looks like. I've got a nice uh, filter like this in the camera. I've got one above me shooting straight down. I didn't have time to get a filter for that one ready. There, now, look at those layers. Two foils. That's like bread of the sandwich, and two blue little slices of sandwich meat, in this case marble meat, or galaxy meat. <laughs> Man, I got so many inappropriate jokes. <laughs> I'm not saying nothing. Well, I'm going to squish that. 
I never squish anything. I'm going to gently reshape the end of this into a more spherical shape. Before I put this metal and punty out there. It did not shape. Relatively cold. It did not take a shape. Alright, so I shaped the end of that a little bit hemispherically. You can see all the layers. I'm going to attach this free end to a steel handle. Stainless steel rod. I'm going to melt off this side. Melt through that 12 millimeter rod. And then the marble is completely switched to a metal handle, and I can start shaping it into a sphere. Marble, it's done. What do you think? Nice? No, it's not done. <laughs> Wouldn't roll right. Not that you roll these. They're decorative. So yeah, watching uh, this week other people's marble making videos, no one is goofy. They're all very serious. I'm making marbles now. We're very serious. No one is doing anything very whimsical. So that must be what is holding me back. Too goofy. Wow, I trapped some little air bubbles from where the shaft of that large diameter rod flattened out into a disc. It made a little valley um, around the circumference of the rod edge. And that translated into a place where air got trapped. And so I am just going through and getting out any weird bubbles. One more. Yeah, that was a lot. Alright, now let's shape that up into a sphere. Quite get it. A little bit crooky. Give it one more. But yeah, you can see all the layers right now. Right. I want to get it a little more spherical before I start giving it a turn, because then it's going to be easier to have the heat uh, even where I want to put it. And where I want to put the heat is I want it subsurface. Of course, I have to heat the surface, but I want it even from the surface to the core. the area where it's not in contact with the metal rods that I'm manipulating it with. Because I don't want the rods to just twist. I want the glass to twist and the rods to hold.
It's a habit. <laughs> flashing, flashing the money. Are you going to stick those right in there? Metal. All right. So now I'm going to pick a spot for my the pole of my next new axis. Well, that's setting up. I can hit the next one. You may have to slow down a little bit, but nope. So I'm done. So quench that while I clean up that area. That's left a little bit of debris in there. I have since cleaned it up. Nice and clean. Let's get it even again. You see it's crooked? Let's fix it. Gravity fix it for me in rotation. I'm going to attach my second handle. And then now I'm going to start putting some twist in there. And right now I just got to heat it for a while. Once I get the heat sort of pumped into the center of the sphere. Feel it where it wants to twist. If it just wants to, the handles, the punties just want to twist on the surface. That's not what you want. So let those cool down and keep putting heat into the center of the marble. So I'm turning it and heating it around the new equator here, sort of in a broad band, eliminating a little bit of the heat on those attachment points, so it's not going to spin there. It could spin a little bit, and you can use some of that spin on the surface to drive the motion of the interior. You can see some spin is starting to get in there. It's not ready to go and smooth. So I want to do it in a controlled way. So it's not doing what it wants or like it's getting away from me and I'm trying to juggle it. I want to keep it close to myself. But I'm guiding it where I want it to go. Just before it gets to that point where it's too wiggly and it's going too fast for me to keep track of. And if it ever starts getting going too fast, I can always take it out of the plane, a second or two, slow it down. Get your, get your bearings, get your center, get your control back. Sorry, don't wait too long. Because then you have to do a lot of time reheating. You can pause confidently. You don't have to pause tentatively. I'm pausing for two seconds for effect, and then I'm going to begin anew twice as effective. Just like if you're explaining something to someone. Sometimes just piling on more words is not going to help. Sometimes you just pause. You have to think about what you said. Then you make the next point. You crush them! <laughs> Alright, I've got all the spin I want in there. I was getting away from me there. It's yapping. Alright, so now I'm going to get rid of one of these handles, this one here. And this is already looking very nice. I'm just going to sphere it up a little bit. Sphere it up.
even after we've made it this year, you can see you know, a lot of spin in there. Now I'm going to galaxy it up. This is my <clears throat> kind of the point where I would call this a tornado. Now I'm doing what I call a galaxia. Changing the axis of rotation one more time. Another turn, not even a full turn, probably. But I have to repeat the process of balancing the heat first before it moves in the center, which is where I want it to move from. Starting to go. Pausing is not ideal at this point because it's so easy to lose it's the shape that you've spent so much time making. And you want them to turn in such a way that you're, well, I have some ideas about what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> I think it looks cool, and it looks interesting from all angles. It's got, like, several different looks depending on where you view it from. It has several different looks depending on what light you look at again. So, i got the twist in there. This one should smooch in my marble mold. Let's get it spherical. There it is. Angry universe. Gob of grease flung from the fingertip of a giant on its way to the floor. Our universe. I'm just letting this. Surface tension and heat and rotation. Smooth so this up. It's quite close to spherical on the unattached end here. I'm going to break off my carry wood. Get in there. See if you can see ya. Get a little twist. Change the axis of rotation as I'm spinning. Now I'm going to switch off to a tiny glass punty. Ooh, the wasps are out. Oh, 
always tell because they, for some reason, do these little spit droplets on my glass rods. Like they think they can eat them or something? Or dissolve them for their nests? You know, weird. First one I've seen of the year. We've got a lot of wasps. We have a cedar shakes on the gable ends of my buildings here in Wisconsin. And the wasps think those are tasty. It's like Woo! Uh, fried stuff on a stick for a wasp. All right, we got a spherical, and oh, I'm just waving it in your face here. Let me see if you can get it. Smooth it out and get too cold. So I'm letting the flame do some work for me with the rotation, surface tension. Just a hair oblate on this sphere so I have it angled down like this. I'll try to correct that a little bit. That's a very fine point. Um, and I see that it's actually that's fixed my perceived problem with the sphericalness of this marble. It's, it's, it's real close. Alright, so now I'm just going to spin it, keep it even, and let it rotate, let the surface firm up. Ready to go in the cherry wood. Right. So, there we go. Two seconds of each. A little indentation. I don't know how my angles right there for you to see, but you get the idea. Alright. So now, this marble is ready to go in the inhaler. I just have to chill this. Cap it off. I'm going to do it in a safe area over here. I'm going to pick up my torch and polish that end. I'm using the scissors or my glass jacks to chill the junction where those two meet. Tap it off. Tap any debris off my torch. Now, just polish that last little bit. This would be a fun, uh, since you guys never get to see this in the live demos, but people who see me in person always get to see this part because it's kind of cool. It would be nice to have a camera just on here so you can just see that end part. <laughs> I could probably just like do like 10, select the best one, and then just always show that footage of me doing it perfectly. That would be ideal. All right, I'm going to get this up. Uh, Little tweezer I've made, heat it up. So this is the metal is orange, and then when it goes to black, I'll just give it an extra second, and it'll be at the right temperature to pick up that marble without shocking the surface. Then we can look at it quickly. <gasps> it's a marble. <laughs> yes, that's what we were doing here. I'll put it in the annealer. All right, for my glass, I like my annealing to be at uh, 980. 
Um, 916 and 980 is fine. Uh, my current annealer is analog and it's being very particular uh, at the at this point in its element life. Elements uh, vary you know where they are in their lifespan. These are nearing the end so they want to burn hotter and hotter and hotter until they pop. Um, so I guess that one's going to go pretty soon. Uh, that's what it sort of feels like. Anyway, uh, that marble was about 1 and 3 sixteenths, so it's going to stay in there for two hours, and then I will ramp the temperature down over the next two hours, uh, and then I'll go to bed because it'll be 11 o'clock. <laughs> but I'll post some pictures of that one uh, tomorrow, and I'll see you guys next time.